So, here's the deal. You're either a broke boy or you just don't want to spend any money on coffee equipment. But you still want to drink delicious coffee. How do you do that? How can you put on your best billion dollar company cosplay and cut corners wherever you can and still have a somewhat acceptable product? Well, I do have some ideas I'd like to share. Also, if you haven't noticed, this video isn't too serious. Very logically starting the segment of the corner I would definitely not cut. It's the coffee beans. I know, I know. Good beans can be quite expensive. You have to pay at least 8 to 10 euros per 250 gram here in Germany. Not accounting for inflation in the future. You can buy bigger batches, like 500 grams or a kilo, in order to save a little bit. But I reckon that's not feasible for everyone. Especially if you want to try different kinds of coffee. Still, if you want to drink good coffee, you need good and fresh coffee beans. James Hoffman made a great video explaining where to look for high quality coffee beans, so give that one a watch. Also, you will always need a scale and a kettle for almost every brewing method, so I will take this as a given going forward. So, where can you cut corners? The grinder, by either buying a cheap and acceptable one, like the Hario Mini for example, or not having one at all. Most roasters will happily grind the coffee for you if you ask them, or they also have a bag ready of pre-ground coffee sometimes. So you yourself don't technically need a grinder. The downside of this is that ground coffee degasses far more quickly and also loses its flavor more quickly compared to whole coffee beans. That is because ground coffee has evolved bigger surface area than the whole beans. This makes oxidation way more rapid and CO2 escapes more easily from the coffee. It's essentially the same principle with burning wood, sawdust, or small wood chips light on fire very easily because of the big surface area where the reaction of oxygen takes place, compared to a log of wood which doesn't really catch fire. Chemistry tangent aside, most roasters offer bags with a little one-way valve which allows the CO2 to escape and keeps air out of the bag. It definitely helps keeping your grounds more fresh, but you will still notice the coffee degrading after the first week or so. Another downside of not grinding your coffee yourself is that you obviously can't adjust the grind size anymore. That limits you in the ways you can brew your coffee since you can't use coffee that has been ground for pour overs to brew with the mocha pot, for example. Another corner you can cut is your literal brew methods. Most brew methods that aren't named espresso are rather cheap to get into. You can easily get a plastic V60 and filter papers for less than 30 euros and boom, you can make pour overs. A French press, smaller mocha pots and the aero press are also in the same price range and can make great coffee. But let's say you want to make coffee with what you have in the kitchen without having to buy something else. In this case, I have three methods for you. The first method is very easy and basic. Get a mug, cup, or whatever your favorite medium to consume coffee in is. Put your coffee in and pour boiling water onto the grounds. And try to saturate the grounds as evenly as you can for better extraction. Let it sit for 4 minutes, then remove the crust on top of your cup and enjoy. Don't immediately take a sip from the cup, otherwise you will burn your tongue just like my dumbass did. With this method, you will really be able to taste all of the complexity and flavors your coffee beans have to offer, since there's no filtration. Although the finish, if you can even call it that, will most likely be quite harsh and fucking awful. This is actually called cupping. Every roaster cups a sample of the freshly roasted beans and then makes adjustments to the roasting process if necessary. They also take a spoonful of the brew and slurp it with the intensity of a fighter jet taken off. Now for grind size, you absolutely want to avoid going too coarse. The first time I did a cupping, I went way too coarse and ended up having a lot of grounds float back up to the surface of my cup, so do avoid that please. Go with an almost medium fine grind, something like this right here. Going a bit too fine is not the end of the world, but it makes the finish even worse. How much coffee you use is generally up to you. I and many others would recommend staying within a range of 60 to 75 grams of coffee per liter of water, depending on how strong you like your coffee. 
If you dip outside of this range, the coffee demon will unfortunately visit you at night, take your coffee privileges, and your soul with them. If you're curious, I used 12 grams of coffee, even though 12.5 came back out of my grinder because retention and 200 grams or milliliters of the hardest tap water imaginable. Anyway, on to the next one. Picture the following situation. You have a shitty, cheap coffee brewer at home, be it from your parents or you bought it yourself or got it as a gift, whatever. Main thing is, you have a diarrhea maker and you want to make better pour over brews. How do you do that? Use the stupid cone part of the coffee maker as a makeshift brewer. If you can balance it on something, that is. Put in a filter paper, your coffee grounds, boil your kettle and start pouring like it would a pour over. If your coffee brewer has this release knob or whatever it's called at the bottom, you can also technically brew a makeshift clever dripper coffee, which is what I'm doing. It's obviously not as good as a V60 brew, and it's more acidic than fluoroantimonic acid for some reason, but probably still better than anything the machine can produce. Also nice if your coffee maker opens at the top and doesn't swing open to the side like mine does. You want a grind to be medium coarse or medium in size. You do have quite a bit of wiggle room when it comes to pour overs, so try experimenting with different grind sizes and adjust as you see fit, if you grind your own coffee. I will also provide you with some good pour over and dripper recipes in the description. And now, to the last method. It's literally just Turkish coffee. You will need a small pot like this, if you're like me and don't own a cat, kez, ka <laughs> if you're like me and don't have a kezve lying around. Now, I had to dig a bit to find actual recipes for this thing since everybody just seems to eyeball everything, but nonetheless, I've found something. Generally, Turkish coffee is brewed in a 1 to 10 grams to water ratio, and you want to use 6 to 8 grams of coffee per person. Since I'm a loser, I will be using 7 grams of coffee and 70 ml of slightly preheated water, somewhere around 60 degrees Celsius. Celsius! Not Fahrenheit, you fast food binge eater. Try to saturate the grounds evenly and stir it up a bit. Now put it on the stove on medium to medium high heat and let it brew for around a minute. Then lower the heat and wait another minute. Just don't let your brew actually boil, otherwise that taste is going to boil your taste buds away. After the second minute, pour the brew into a cup and wait for it to cool down. The taste was honestly a bit unexpected, because it tasted almost like nothing. I didn't use specialty coffee for this brew and I also have no idea for how many millennia that coffee sat around in our cupboard, so that might as well be the reason. Or I fucked up the brewing process, who knows. Also, watch out for the grounds at the bottom of your cup. You don't want a mouthful of coffee sand, believe me. The grind size you need for Turkish coffee is very fine, like flour. You actually need to buy it pre-ground if you don't own a good or at least decent grinder. Cheap grinders just don't cut it with this method. So, these are the three cheap brew methods I wanted to show you. I hope this video was somewhat useful, or at least a bit entertaining. You can find a few recipes for the brew methods I used in the description. Otherwise, bye bye